Hey guys and welcome to Toby Talks Tech. My name is Toby and today we're going to talk some tech. In this video I really want to... Oh, God damn it. Okay, annoying. Now, whether you're a Windows or a Mac user, I'm pretty sure that you would have encountered issues with your hard drive running out of space at one point or another. Therefore, in this video, I want to show you three quick methods for clearing out and recovering some of that precious hard drive space. First, super simple, and you should know that anyway, I'm going to show you how to clear out your trash and flush some of those temporary files that tend to clog up your system. Then we will cover my favorite method, which is to use a small, powerful, and free program called Windia Stat, or Disk Inventory X on the Mac to visually see what is on your hard drive space so you can selectively delete all of the stuff that you no longer need or that's just flying around and cluttering up your machine. Finally, I want to touch on hibernation mode and some of the meaty files that it might drop on your hard drive and show you ways that you can disable it if you choose to do so. There's going to be timestamps down below so you can jump to whatever you might find relevant or interesting. But now, without wasting any more of your precious bandwidth, let's jump right into it. The absolute easiest way to free up some hard drive space, and you should know about this whether you're a Windows or a Mac user, is to simply clear out your recycle bin or your trash. If I open up my recycle bin, there's a whole bunch of files in here that I've deleted. However, they're not actually deleted from a hard drive just yet, and the reason for that is so that, you know, if I accidentally delete something, I can right click here and restore the files. However, these files are still sitting on my hard drive. They're still using up quite a lot of space. And if I sort this by size, there's quite a few pretty meaty files here using up a couple of gigabytes of space. In order to clear your recycle bin, simply use the button at the top or just right click on the recycle bin and then select to empty recycle bin. On the Mac, that'll be right clicking your trash and selecting to empty trash. You will be asked to confirm this operation because once you've emptied your recycle bin, there is no way to restore those files unless you do a hard drive scan, which is a whole lot more technical. So let's just say yes, flush our recycle bin and reclaim uh, probably about 10 gigabytes of space. Another thing you can do if you're on Windows, you can come into the file explorer, navigate to your PC where you see all of your hard drive and you'll see my C drive is pretty filled up. I only have 25 gigabytes left. Simply right click, go into properties. And under the general tab, you'll find a little button for disk cleanup. So let's click that. And this will give you an option to clear out a whole bunch of little temporary files that Windows might have accumulated over the weeks, months, or years that you haven't cleared this out. So let's delete the temporary files. You can also clear your recycle bin from here. If Windows has crashed and restarted a couple of times, or if you have a user of Internet Explorer, you might actually find a couple of gigabytes of data in here that you can then simply clear out and free back out. Again, confirm that you're sure you want to delete all of these files. And again, you just recovered a little bit of extra space. Let's talk about my absolute favorite way for clearing out and recovering a whole lot of hard drive space, and that is using a program called WinDearStat. That program is also available on the Mac. It's called Disk Inventory X. It's the same thing just for Mac. This program is very lightweight. It is free and it's really powerful. It's really useful. So I'm going to drop you these links down in the video description. One's for Windows Stat. The other one sits under derlian.com for Disk Inventory X. It's the same program. And then on the left hand side, simply come to Downloads and Permalink. And there's a couple of sources where you can download it. Personally, I prefer SourceForge, but you know, just download it wherever you want. These websites are a little bit junky-ish. They contain a lot of links. Really, all you want to do is click on this big green download button to download WinDearStat. Let's save this out to our hard drive. It's less than a megabyte. And then you can simply install it and launch it. This is the screen you will see when you first launch WinDearStat or Disk Inventory X. You can simply select one or many of your hard drive and then hit OK. And WinDearStat will now go through and analyze all of the files that are on your hard disk. Now, this can take a little bit depending on the size of your hard drive, but once it's done, you'll be given this amazing visual representation of all of the stuff that you have on your hard drive. The awesome thing about this is that now you can actually click on one of these blocks and it will actually in the Explorer show you what that file is and show you the size as well. So you can actually visually navigate through the contents of your hard drive and identify stuff that you don't need. For example, here, have a look at all of these little green files. In the Explorer, I can see that it's actually just cache files. If I go up, it's actually just a whole bunch of cache files for After Effects. And as you select these folders, you can see this big white outline that essentially tells you which files are contained within that folder. So here I've got 32 gigabytes of temporary files for After Effects. And from this Explorer at the top, you can simply right click one of these folders and you can either 
open an Explorer window to that location so you can move files around. You can also delete to move them to the recycle bin. Again, remember that doesn't actually free up the space because it's just being moved to the recycle bin. Or you can delete directly. This will skip the recycle bin and actually free up the space. So let's flush some temporary files. Windestat will update the visualization. And again, we can repeat this process. I've got Doom installed here, which takes up about 70 gigabytes. Um, there's a whole bunch of software here, Steinberg. There's a whole bunch of old software as well, which takes up about 32 gigabytes. So let's delete that as well. I'm pretty sure I don't need that anymore, or I'll have a backup of it somewhere. And it's all about just going through these files, having a look at what is it, do I need it? If you need it, maybe you want to back it up or move it to another hard drive. Otherwise, you can just flush it directly from inside of Windestat. And I'm speeding the video up here a little bit. All I'm doing is I'm just repeatedly looking for files that I can either move off or delete. Or, you know, obviously, if you're not sure about something, don't delete it necessarily right here. There's something in my Windows directory. I probably wouldn't delete that. I might break my computer. So delete things that you know you can delete or move them off to another hard drive. Windestat is absolutely fantastic in giving you a simple visual representation of all of the stuff that is on your hard drive and making it really easy to identify the things that you can clear out to reclaim all of that space. Finally, let's talk about hibernation mode. Hibernation mode is essentially the same thing as shutting down your computer. It usually happens when you close the lid on your laptop. But before the computer cuts off all of the power, it actually writes all of the data it has in memory, like all of the open programs, all of the files you're working on at the moment, to disk into a file so that when you start the computer back up or you open the lid on your laptop, all of that can get loaded back very quickly and reinstate the place that you left off. So it feels like the computer didn't actually shut down. Now, hibernation is a fantastic feature. It works exactly the same way on a Mac as it does on Windows. The one thing, though, is that all of that memory needs to be written to your hard disk, and therefore it actually takes up quite a bit of space. On Windows, for example, if you go into your C drive and you view all of your hidden files, you will usually find a hyperfile.sys file, which is the file that gets written when you put your computer into hibernation mode. This file can be quite large depending on how much RAM, how much memory your computer has. For example, my computer has 64 gigabytes of RAM, which means that this file can be up to 64 gigabytes in size, depending on how many programs I've got open and what I'm doing at the moment my computer goes into hibernation. Now, whether you do or do not want to disable hibernation is very much up to you. Personally, I always leave it on on my laptops, but on my desktops, if I find that it's enabled for some reason, I do turn it off just to reclaim that space, but also because I'm quite OCD about turning off my computer when I leave. I don't usually leave it running and wait for it to go into hibernation. So in order to turn off hibernation mode, you need to come into your power and sleep settings. On Windows 10, you can simply search for power and it'll be the first option that comes up. Windows 7, XP, Vista, they're hidden in different places, but they're always usually called power options. Once you jump into these options, because I'm on Windows 10 and Windows 10 assumes that I'm stupid, it's actually hidden those options under additional power settings. And here you get presented with a number of different power plans that control how your computer manages its power and when certain things turn on and off. If I want to customize this more, I have to jump into change plan settings. And in here again, it's hidden even further. So let's go into change advanced power settings. And in here, like four levels deep under sleep, you'll find an option for hibernate after. My setting is actually set to never, to zero, which means do not hibernate. However, I actually still have this hyperfile.sys, which I don't actually need and Windows wouldn't use because my computer wouldn't hibernate. On your Mac, you will find this file at the root under var slash vm. There's a file called sleep image and that is the exact same thing as the hyperfile.sys on the Windows. It's essentially just the image that gets written when your computer goes into hibernation. Now, you may think that you can simply delete this file, but it's actually in use by Windows. You won't be able to just delete it. You actually need to fully disable hibernation mode and delete this file via the command line. So let's open up a command prompt. But in order to get the proper permissions, you need to right click the command prompt and say run as administrator. And now at the command prompt as administrator, and by the way, anything you execute on the command line on Windows or in the terminal in Mac, either with sudo or admin access, do at your own risk. You really need to know what you're doing here because you can seriously just brick your computer. So be careful what you type or what you execute here. So in order to disable hibernation mode on Windows, I'm going to type powercfg.exe space forward slash hibernate space off. So I'm explicitly telling Windows to turn hibernation mode off. And Keep an eye out on this hibernation file down here on my C drive. Let's hit enter. 
And you may have noticed the hibernation file has been removed. I've reclaimed those 25, 26 gigabytes of space and hibernation mode is no longer enabled on my computer. On your Mac, it is very similar. You need to open up a terminal and then execute sudo space pmset space dash a space hibernate mode space zero. This will disable hibernation on your Mac. However, you will still have that sleep image file under slash var slash vm. So now you can simply remove it with sudo space rm for remove space forward slash var forward slash vm forward slash sleep image. Hit enter and that is going to flush that hibernation file and again reclaim you a little bit of space. Now with hibernation mode, as I already mentioned, it kind of depends on the way you use your computer and whether it's a desktop or a laptop and whether you want to actually turn it off in the first place because it is a useful feature to have. But if you do want just that little bit of extra space and you're pretty sure you don't need hibernation mode, this is one way you can reclaim just a little bit of extra space. And it's as easy as that. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.